Today's video is going to cover a topic I talked about in one of my previous videos in which I went into detail on how to secure yourself online a little bit better. Today's video is going to take one of those pieces and we're going to go further into it and we're going to further explore is what is called two-factor authentication. So what this allows you to do is when you go to a site and log in, that's your first factor of authentication, your password. That's one factor. Two-factor means you need to have a second way to prove it's you logging in. It, you know, sometimes on your phone, it's your face. If you're using Face ID on Apple, it's your fingerprint. If you're using your fingerprint sensor on your phone, that's a second factor. And what these sites do is it allows you to set up what's called two-factor authentication. Sometimes you'll see it referred to as 2FA. And all that does is if you're using one of the apps I'm talking about today, I'm gonna to talk about a specific one called Authy, but there are a bunch of them out there. And I'll, again, I'll go over and cover those, and I'll also put a link to some of those down in the description. But what two-factor does is when you go ahead and put your password in, then it's gonna pop up and say, enter this six-digit code in. And what you're gonna to have to do is in the app, it generates a six digit code and refreshes it every 30 seconds. So you got 30 seconds to put that code in. So today's video, we're just gonna kinda of go in and I'm gonna show you how that works and how you can set it up. It's a real simple thing to do, but at first it takes a little getting used to, but it's not a very complex thing to do. And I would strongly, strongly suggest setting this up, especially for your important accounts. You don't need to put it on everything, but at least your main email accounts and maybe even your Facebook, Twitter, uh, Instagram, I believe allows it to be used. There's quite a few sites that you can use it on. But if somebody gets into your email, man, it can, for many people, it can almost be game over. You could reset your bank account information from there. You can reset your credit card information. There is so much vital stuff in those that people could get access to and change to be able to access those other things. Kind of the email is that king prize that's right at the top. That's the big, big thing that if people can get into that, you might be in a little bit of trouble. So that's one reason you do want to set a really good password for your email account. But the second thing you can do is enable this two-factor authentication. So even if somebody gets your password, they still have to put in the six-digit code that changes every 30 seconds. The chances they're going to have that is very, very slim next to nothing, especially if you take the proper measures on those things. Before we get going though, please, please take a moment to hit that subscribe button down below. While you're down there, just sneak a little over from there and you can go ahead and click on that bell button so you can be notified of all my latest videos. And if you have any questions or comments or even suggestions on future videos, please don't hesitate to leave those down in the comments. I'm always looking for ideas of future videos that will help you out. I use a lot of different sources to come up with ideas of what kind of videos to do. You can also go over to my website at adamontech.com where you can browse some more of my geekier things that I post, but I also have a contact me page. So if you have any suggestions, you can also hop over there and send them off. So let's jump in. So what is two-factor authentication? As I've mentioned, two-factor is just that second factor. It just needs a second way to prove that it's me logging in to whatever service I'm trying to get into. And there's a few different ways you can use it. The first is the one we're covering today by using an app. I'm gonna be showing an app called Authy. Authy is just one of the number of different apps that are out there. Many times you're gonna see it referred to as Google Authenticator. Anytime you see them saying set up your Google Authenticator, you can use Authy, you can use Google Authenticator, you can use um, LastPass Authenticator, and there's a few other ones out there. They all do the same exact thing. The reason I started with Authy is Authy syncs up to a cloud. So what happens is when you set up all your accounts, it syncs them to their servers. And I Authy is done by a really well-known company that takes security very, very seriously. So I do trust them really well with this. But it syncs it up there. So if I get a new phone or if my phone gets destroyed or lost or stolen, all I have to do is on my new device, just go to download Authy, log in, and boom, all my codes are right back there. At the time, Google Authenticator, you had to reset everything back up anytime you got a new phone. Now they do have the feature where you can save everything online, 
log in on your new device and you're right back off and running. But that's the main feature you want to make sure. Otherwise, it is a lot of work because what it does is it shows you a QR code. Then you need to use that QR code to, resub um, to recreate your account. And it's not hard to do, but man, if you've got 20, 30 accounts set up with this, that could take a while. I'd rather just log in on the service and let it sync online. So Authy is the one I use. Probably the three I would suggest is Google Authenticator, Authy, or LastPass Authenticator. Now, how it looks and works, let me jump over to my phone. So I'll go ahead and get into my phone. So I've got my Authy app opened right up. And as you're going to see at the top here, I've got a bunch of different sites and services. I've got my email accounts. I've got my LastPass accounts. I've got some of my web hosting, my Dropbox, my GoDaddy, some of my Twitter stuff. I've got all sorts of different accounts set up. And I have even more if I scroll down. And the nice thing is at the top, there's a search icon. So if you get a lot of logins saved in here, you can actually search for them to make it a little bit quicker. But what you're going to see at the top here, I already have my Evernote select. So I have two-factor authentication set up for Evernote, which is just a notes-taking app. What you're going to see is there's a little countdown clock. And after 30, if I don't enter that code in by the time that clock gets to zero, I have to wait for the new code to be generated. So you've got 30 seconds to enter that code in. Now, they realize that people aren't always that quick. So let's say, for example, you copy the code and maybe it switches over just as you're hitting you know, send on the site you're trying to log in, it will still go. They probably give it about five to maybe eight or 10 seconds leeway, just in case you're not quite quick enough at getting it. But what will happen is if you enter the wrong code, it's not gonna let you in. So let me hop over to my desktop. I'm gonna open up my browser. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to log in on Evernote. Now, what's going to happen is because I have two-factor authentication set up for this, it's going to say, what is your password to log in? So I'm going to just enter a six-digit code. doesn't matter. Whoops, I think I did too many digits there. And I'm going to hit sign in. So this would be like, say somebody got my Evernote password and they said, I want to try to get in. So they're going to just pop in a six-digit code. What's going to happen is I'm going to put in the wrong code and it says you're not valid and it's not going to let me in. This is how it works on all the websites you use. It doesn't matter if it's your email or any of those sites. It will not let you in. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to enter my code. I'm going to give it just a second because you'll see the countdown just switched over. So now I'm going to put in the proper code. And now I'm going to hit sign in and boom, I am into my account. Just taking a second to load. And there we go. My account is now showing. So that's a great way to lock down your accounts because if they don't have that six digit code, there is no way they're getting in. And that's how simple it is. I only have the app installed on my phone. To me, that's just a little better security, but a lot of these apps have browser extensions or programs you can install on your computer. You can throw it on your tablet. You can have it on multiple phones. But for me, I like just having it on my phone, and I also do have it on my Apple Watch, so I can also go in on my watch and get those six-digit codes also. That's how simple it is to use. So once you set it up, all you have to do is just go log in on the site, it's going to ask for the six-digit code. You go into the app on the phone, and there you go. You pop it in, and you're good to go. That's all there is to it. It's not really that hard. So now what I'm going to show you is actually how to set up in your Google Authenticator, Authy. They all, as I said, kind of work the same way. So what I did is I took my Evernote account, and I broke the two-factor authentication stuff. They'll also sometimes call it two-step authentication because your first step's your password, then the second step is like your authenticator app, or in another video I'm gonna actually show using a little password key here. Um, so that's your second factor. Just, they're all kind of different names for the same thing. So let's jump back over to the browser window. And now I'm in my security center in Evernote. And what I'm going to see right here is I've got two-step verification. You may have to Google it 
to find where the site is that has it. But a lot of times when you log into any account, whether it's your Gmail account or Dropbox or uh, Twitter page, if you go into your account settings, you'll somewhere see something that says security or password and security, something like that. If you can't find it, just Google it and it'll tell you, you know, you can find a search pretty quickly or just down in the comments, go ahead and leave a question and I might be able to shoot you a link directly to where you need to go to set this up for whatever server you're trying to use. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click enable and it's going to tell me a little more about it and you'll see that they kind of show you a couple different things there. So it's going to have you do a couple different things. So it's going to make sure it's going to send you a verification email. So I'm going to paste in that confirmation code. Okay, now it's gonna pop up and ask, what do I wanna use? Do I wanna use Google Authenticator or whatever app I wanna use? So I'm gonna to choose to continue with iOS. Now it's gonna pop up with a QR code. So what I'm gonna now do is jump over to my phone and in the app, if I scroll all the way to the bottom, there's an add account button that you'll see. I'm going to tap on add account and it's going to say scan QR code. There is a way you can enter it manually and it will give you some directions for that but I'm going to tap scan QR code. I'm going to hold my phone up and boom it's going to pick the code up right away. You can rename it what you want so I'll just I like to just leave it as Evernote. I'm going to hit save. Now what it's going to do is you're going to see the second step is enter your code. So it just wants to make sure you got it set up all right. So what you need to do is enter that code that's on the screen. So I'm going to enter that into the browser. So let me switch back to my browser so you can see. So now I'm entering that in and hit continue. It's going to display some codes. You do want to save these. So I usually will actually save these backup codes to my last pass. And then I'm going to click continue. And then they just want you to double check that you actually saved your code. Oop. Move my window down so I can see it. So it really wants to be careful that you've set everything up properly. And now I'm done. And what you're going to see now is two-step verification is enabled. So when I come back to this site, it's going to ask me to pop in that code that you see on my phone. That is all there is to it. So to kind of sum this up and kind of button it all up into a nice little thing, you download your app, whether it's Google Authenticator, Authy, or um, LastPass Authenticator. Those are kind of the big three that I know of off the top of my head. I'm sure I know there's a few others out there. But you download the app, set up your account for whatever service you're going to use. Then go to the site you want to set up two-factor authentication for. Most sites have it. I really wish banks would have it. That's to me, I mean, come on, you don't want people getting into your bank account. And I'm sorry, SMS verification, that is weak and has been proven to be very, very easy for somebody to hack if they want to. So come on, banks, get your tails in gear and put two-factor authentication in place and stop being lazy. Okay, off my soapbox now. So you install the app on your phone. Then all you do is you go to the site, whether it's Gmail, Evernote, Dropbox, Twitter, you know, whatever site you want to hopefully set it up on. Again, most sites nowadays do have it. The sites you probably won't find have it is maybe your local newspaper website, you know, th things like that. And honestly, I kind of use generic passwords on those kinds of sites anyways. If you get into my local newspaper account... <laughs> I don't have any credit card information. There's nothing saved. It's just an account to log in and use the site. So you go to the site. You either will find this place in the security settings that says two-step verification, 2FA, two-factor authentication. Any of those terms are what you want to look for. Then just follow the directions. It will eventually put a QR code up on the screen. You use the app on your phone to scan it. Then it's going to say, can you verify this six-digit code? And then you put the six-digit code that's showing up on your device, and you're all set to go. It'll generate some backup codes. You want to make sure you save those somewhere, and you're all done. And that is it. 
So I hope this video will help kind of take away that fear a little bit of using two-factor authentication. For using better security, there is a fine line between security and convenience. There are times I just want to get into something quickly and every 30 days or so, it's going to sometimes ask you to re-authenticate with that. Some sites do go a little longer. And if I just want to get in quickly, it's like, I've got to take my phone out, got to go to this, you know, got to go through those steps. But Honestly, for my email accounts and things like that that are tied to some really important things, yes, it's frustrating at the moment, but boy, it is so worth that extra security and just peace of mind that the chances anybody's going to get into one of my accounts is next to nothing. I'm going to do another video that's going to come out very close to this one that's going to discuss kind of going even a step further. It's an even simpler step but it's even a more secure step than even this. Now, honestly, between just setting a really good password using a password manager like LastPass or 1Password, which I will be doing a video on soon, and then using something like Authy or Google Authenticator, you're gonna be really well off. Unless you're being targeted by, you know, big name government players or you're a government spy or something, like some crazy thing like that, which, most of you watching this, you should be doing those things already if you're one of those. But for just the general person, honestly, using an app like Authy and just setting a really good password, you're going to be fine, nice and secure, and it's going to be pretty easy to utilize. Again, this is a really, really big topic. So if you have any further questions or just not sure on something, please don't hesitate to leave a comment down below. I am more than happy to help you out on this and get you so you feel good about security in your accounts. Because let me tell you, I've helped a number of people that have had their accounts compromised. And it is a, it's kind of that pit in the bottom of your stomach. It's just, you feel very vulnerable. It's just not a good place to be. And I don't want to see any of you find yourselves in that position. So please take your security seriously. There are ways to make it a little bit more convenient and still be really secure. Again, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to leave a comment below. Otherwise, this is Adam on Tech, signing off.